the depths of hell a witch did dwell. It's not every day that an opera singer gets to bring a cannibalistic witch to life. I lure children into the forest and I cook them into gingerbread cakes and then I eat them. It's delightful. But what's not so delightful is having to wear a big puppetry rig to create a larger-than-life witch on stage. The entire time I'm on stage, I'm, I'm basically working with a puppet while trying to sing and convey a character. So I need to dance with the puppet, <laughs> walk forward in rhythm while looking to my right. Yes. In directing Hansel and Gretel, Brenna Corner had to figure out how to make adults look like kids and create a variety of creatures and forest spirits. And quite frankly, the best way I could figure out how to do that was puppets. So anything that wasn't human became a puppet. It's different in that it's not my physicality because I'm manipulating her hands, her arms. Facially and vocally, I'm trying to do the same things that I would do if I were performing it without a puppet. Now, if you're thinking of puppets as something you put on your hand, think again. Judd Palmer of Old Trout Puppet Workshop in Canada designed the puppets. So we had to really blow up the notion of what a puppet is uh, in order to successfully en encompass uh, the, the fusion of opera and puppetry. We wanted the whole thing to feel like it comes out of a book. You know, the illustrations come to life like a, like a pop-up book that comes magically into existence before your very eyes. Ian Gunn is one of the puppeteers that's helping make that happen. Oh yeah, I have about six costume changes back and forth throughout the show. I'm operating the witch, uh, puppeteering her, all of her facial uh, expressions and characteristics along with her body movement, while an opera singer is operating her hand gestures. So we have to be in concert, in sync with one another and that's probably the, one of the most demanding puppet-oriented performance things I've ever done in my life, for sure. I don't know how to describe it, but I feel like I am transported inside this imagination. It's like we're doing something magical, and it's a magical character, and the only reason it's alive is because we're in there giving it our all, so it's pretty cool. What's extraordinary to me about puppetry is that as an audience we're like continually investing our imagination in seeing the thing that the performers want us to see. You can see the puppeteer right there in a ridiculous outfit. They're sweating and panting from having to run across the stage. And it lets us all in on the joke in a way, but also in the kind of the dream. It's, it makes it evident to everybody in the audience that, that they're going to have to invest imaginatively in this in the same way as the people on stage are. The thing about this production is you want to come to this production with your imagination. Like that, that joy that you had when you were a kid and you could imagine what would happen if a stick was suddenly a giant scary monster. That's what you want to bring to this production because that's what this production creates is the sense of wonder and joy and mystery that's inherent in being a kid. And inherent in a story that begins with the magical possibilities of Once Upon a Time. Bafa Commando, KPBS News.